there's a steam locomotive sitting in the bottom of a valley in Washington State. And by sitting, I mean it fell down there. And by fell, I mean it was on a bridge with two passenger coaches. And by bridge, I mean, well, a bridge, but it was blown up! Seriously! And why? For a movie, of course! Duh! This ridiculous and insane story has been mentioned to me multiple times, and only recently did I take the time to actually research and bring everything together. But before we proceed, a big special shout out and thank you to a man named Brian McCamish, who not only made the trek with a friend out to the somewhat remote area to confirm the engine was still there, but also cataloged his adventures in a couple articles that helped me put this video together. Without him, this research probably wouldn't have been as easy as it was, so thanks, Brian. In any event, yes, a steam locomotive was destroyed for a movie, which wouldn't be the first time that's happened, but as late as it was, given the fact that this was after the end of steam in general, well, it seems like kind of a waste. I mean, it depends on how you look at it, I guess. The engine in question is Georgia Pacific 262ST, a saddle tank engine, number nine. She was built sometime in the early 1900s, and was a perfectly acceptable engine. Honestly, pretty rare, as tank engines in general aren't super common in North America. In 1960, a movie company would approach Georgia Pacific Corporation to use one of their retiring steam engines. Georgia Pacific did donate a few of their engines for use in parks for display, but they did agree to allow one to be destroyed for the movie, as well as two passenger coaches. On top of this, the movie company had also struck a deal with the Simpson Timber Company. They're the ones that owned the Wainuchi River Bridge, which had long since been out of use at the time. It was originally constructed to access large amounts of timber in the area, but once those hills were logged out, they didn't need to utilize it anymore, but it was still there. In any event, they weren't using it, so they were like, yeah, blow it up, sure, why not? Because everything about this story just has to be insane. As for the movie, well, it was called Ring of Fire, and it would release in 1961. It was set in Oregon, though again, this particular scene was shot in Washington. If you've never heard of this movie, I, I don't really blame you. Even at the time, it was kind of a box office bomb, and even now IMDb has a rating of 6.2 out of 10, which puts it at the fine category for a movie, like, it's okay. I haven't seen it full length, as it's pretty hard to get a hold of, though I have seen bits and pieces. And that rating seems about appropriate. The movie's fine, it's, it's okay, it's watchable, but it's definitely not a cinematic classic. Though I think largely because of the nature of this particular scene where they blow up the bridge, it has developed a bit of a cult following, as obviously there was a lot of use of practical effects. The name Ring of Fire comes from the fact that there's a forest fire as part of the plot, which I won't spoil for you in case you actually want to watch the movie. But for one thing, no. No, they did not light an actual forest fire for that, even though the whole blow up the bridge thing might tell you otherwise. In that instance, they used stock footage from forest fires that have actually occurred out west, often enough that there was plenty of footage just sitting around of that. But the bridge part they were going to do with a actual bridge and an actual locomotive pulling an actual train, because apparently using a model train for this would have been way too easy. And indeed, in that particular scene, they drive the locomotive over the bridge, and prior to filming, they'd already wired the bridge with explosives. Number 9 actually goes first, falling down and actually suffering a steam explosion. The coaches soon follow. Though part of their descent is actually obscured because of how much steam billows out of number 9. Despite being filmed for a movie, it is one of the only times that something like this has ever been caught on film. And in that way, it is pretty unique. Again, it seems like kind of a waste in retrospect since the movie didn't do that well, but hey, you know, we're still talking about it now just because of it, so maybe it wasn't for nothing. Also, you destroyed a steam locomotive that could have been preserved, but whatever. In any event, number 9 is still there as are the coaches. For decades after the film, while their presence was rumored, some argued that they weren't there anymore and had been removed. But, as I said, Brian McCamish 
and a friend headed out and confirmed the locomotive's presence. More recent pictures I'm able to dig up show that, again, she is still there, as are those two coaches. In pieces. Probably because they fell off a bridge. I don't know what you expected. But indeed, they remain, and likely will for the foreseeable future. I can't imagine anyone taking the time to recover these, whether it be for preservation or just to dispose of them, simply because of the remote nature of the area. According to Brian's article, it was actually very difficult for him and a friend to even get to where they were, and they didn't have the necessary equipment to get close to a lot of the remains because of how steep that area is. As I said, it is very remote and rugged terrain. This isn't just a Sunday hike, you have to go prepared. So just that element alone makes it unlikely that any of this equipment will ever be removed from the area. They'll likely remain as permanent landmarks until they eventually disintegrate into dust. Because even if they were removed, what are you gonna do with them? They are utterly destroyed. The coaches are a little bit intact, but number nine blew up. Rebuilding her to any significant extent is pretty much out of the question. You'd have better luck with most of the underwater locomotives I've discussed, because at least they're in a single piece. The coaches are also dented and badly rusted away. The point is, they aren't going anywhere. No one's gonna remove them. And they'll stay exactly where they are, as a curiosity in what is otherwise mostly unrestrained wilderness. And maybe that's for the best, because, hey, she's still talked about. And if nothing else, it makes people remember Ring of Fire. Which, again, was only an average movie at best. Like, seriously, no one would remember this movie if not for the locomotive. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, maybe blowing up the bridge was the right idea, because if nothing else, people still remember their movie. Only because of that. Not because it was that good, but because you blew up the bridge. I mean, that's something, I guess. And with that, a special thank you goes out to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267 Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Brian, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Lord Off 444, A Person 723, Royal 12860, I Surfer 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matt Weaver, Tom Red Lion, NS Productions 8104, Wheeljack8401, Rescues Greyhounds, The Baxter, Caleb Crosswhite, Ohio Trucker 1, Andrew Bowen, Josh Johnson, Caleb Rainwaters, Prez Drenton, Master of None, Mr. Sleepy, Travis Dolinsky, Jared Brussel, Joshua Long, Tommy Rossini, Ben McCola, Panzer Kitsun 131-232, Mark Holding, Dr. Racer78, G Wiz, Mr. Terevel, Liam Wright, Hayden DeGrow, Metal for Life Guy, Battle 604, Hannah Bird, Railroad Preserver 2000, No, Eric Hutton, and of course, my dad. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.